Today, I'll focus on a form of peripheral neuropathy that we get the most questions about, and that's small fiber neuropathy, sometimes called small fiber sensory neuropathy. So in this video, I'll cover what is small fiber neuropathy and how is it different from peripheral neuropathy, what are some of the causes of small fiber neuropathy, and how can it be treated. Don't go anywhere, it's gonna be good. Hello, Health Explorers. If you've been told your neuropathy is permanent, I'm here to help you achieve new levels of health you've never dreamed possible. So make sure you click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. And don't forget to click on the bell to get notified as soon as we publish new content. Now, let's dive into part one. What is small fiber neuropathy and how's it different from peripheral neuropathy? Well, small fiber neuropathy is merely one type of peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral nerve fibers are classified according to size, which is determined by the thickness of the protective coating around the nerve called myelin. A diagnosis of small fiber neuropathy simply indicates that the smaller peripheral nerves, which contain a small amount of myelin, sometimes no myelin, have been damaged. The job of these small nerve fibers is to relay information from the skin or organ system to the brain. They're mainly sensory, meaning they deliver information about touch, temperature, and pain sensations. So part of their function is to interpret signals dealing with sharp or dull sensations, as well as hot and cold temperature sensations, but they're also responsible for delivering information about vibration, even taste, smell, and sight. The symptoms from this type of nerve damage usually begin in the feet, and as it worsens, it will travel up the legs. But it can also affect the hands and the arms. Often people will describe the uh, odd symptoms or sensations as feeling like they're wearing socks or gloves on their feet, which is why sometimes it's referred to as the stocking glove pattern. Now, small fiber neuropathy can also affect the nerves that go to the internal organs. Now, when we're talking about small fiber neuropathy, the symptoms can vary from person to person. They include symptoms like burning pain, numbness, pins and needles, tingling, or prickling sensations. It can also include sharp stabbing or piercing pain, which people often describe as lightning bolt or electric shock sensations. Or on the opposite spectrum, it can also feel like a deep ache and pain. Now, the skin on the feet or the legs can become discolored as well. Or the limbs can become hypersensitive to touch. For instance, these people often can't tolerate the weight of bed sheets on their, their feet or their legs. Or sometimes they can't even tolerate wearing their pants and their shirt because of the pressure of the fabric. Patients will also describe or report feeling a squeezing sensation around their feet and calves, or even their arms. Sometimes they'll feel excessive coldness in their limbs, Others will describe it as an itching type of feeling on the skin, but when they go to scratch, there's no itch there. Now, the last part that I want to touch upon is how organ systems can be affected by this type of nerve damage. When small fiber nerves that go to an organ system get damaged, there will be a disruption in that organ's function. For instance, depending on the organ's function, a person may suffer from abdominal or heart rate problems, known as arrhythmias, or they may develop circulatory problems or changes in blood pressure, causing it to be either too high or too low. They may also experience digestive problems or problems swallowing, or they could possibly lose bowel or bladder function. Lastly, a person might also experience sexual dysfunction in both men and women. We've seen a lot of men who have suffered erectile dysfunction due to small fiber neuropathy. Well, let's move on to part two. What are some of the causes of small fiber neuropathy? The most common cause of small fiber neuropathy is diabetes and prediabetes. Also, clinical studies have shown that small fibers of the peripheral nerves are very susceptible to damage from toxins like alcohol, arsenic, and heavy metals like mercury. Also, MSG, aspartame, pesticides, and herbicides used in farm, gardens, and lawns, and even household insecticides. 
Also, there are many medications that can damage the small nerve fibers, like fluoroquinolones such as Cipro or Ciprofloxacin. There's Levaquin or Levofloxacin, and also Metronidazole, also known as Flagyl, and even certain chemotherapy drugs. There are also autoimmune diseases that can damage the small nerve fibers, such as lupus, Sjogren's, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, and celiac disease. Other medical conditions that can damage the small nerves include thyroid dysfunction, like hypothyroidism, or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or HIV, even hepatitis C infections, and Lyme disease. Also, copper and vitamin B12 deficiencies are especially linked with causing small fiber peripheral neuropathy. In fact, Dr. Montero did an informative video on B12 deficiencies that you should really take a look at. Now, let's get to the exciting part. Part three, how to treat small fiber neuropathy. Now, standard medical treatment for peripheral neuropathy includes drugs like gabapentin or neurotin, Lyrica or pregabalin, Zimbalta or duloxetine. Now, the problem with these drugs is that they, they only mask the symptoms at best, and they only usually decrease pain symptoms in about 50% of peripheral neuropathy sufferers. But the real problem is that with time, they add further damage to the peripheral nerves. Research, however, has shown that certain vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants have a significant impact on repairing the damage to the small fiber nerves. Things like B12 in the form of methylcobalamin, B6 in the form of paradoxal 5-phosphate, folate, R-alpha-lipoic acid, acetyl-L-carnitine, and others. Now, I'm not going into any great details because we actually did two videos on this topic. The first one was called Vital Ingredients for Nerve Repair, and the second one was called The Right Dose. Now, these videos will outline exactly what you should take and how much, and I'll include links in the description below. In a nutshell, small fiber neuropathy is treated the same way as any other peripheral neuropathy. Now, I will say in severe cases, you may need to also use photobiomodulation along with your nerve support formulas. I'll also include the link for this video that we created called Healing with Light. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this information and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell to get notified when we release new videos. Also, please share this information with anyone you know who's suffering with peripheral neuropathy so they're not trying to battle this alone. Until next time, my friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great health.